Right, oh, here's a thought I'd do a bit of a different video combining some of the Cyvex software, talking about a different subject, this time being water injection, and also showing a practical example of it in the performance of a of a car and its implementation. What most people are interested in, I get asked this all the time since probably the mid 1990s when I first started using these systems and develop, developing them for myself mostly <clears throat> and then applying them to customers cars is you know are they good are they a band-aid you know why would you even bother thinking of running something like this when there's alternate fuels commonly available these days specifically the ethanol based fuels um, E85 is quite popular depending on which country you're in but the biggest issue in running a fuel such as that is mostly around the long-term effects of using it and it, they can be varied but they do tend to have their own set of problems associated with them. Um, I guess the, yeah, the, the really the biggest aspect about it is, is people are always concerned about the performance and then the next most common question I get is is it something that you could call durable? Well, if it's implemented in properly in something like a Cyvex ECU and, and you go to somebody who has a bit of a background in implementing it, um, then there's really no sort of question as to whether it's the same type of durability or not. It's really just the quality of the integration that you put into the computer. So what I'll show you here is this particular car we've been working on recently. So it's a Mitsubishi Evo 10 and this is equipped with what is generically referred to as an SST transmission. Quite a heavy car. Um, this particular one's just set up as purely as a road car. The bloke's not interested in, in putting you know, funny sort of non-OEM tyres on it or stripping weight out of it or any of that other bullshit that a lot of people do to get a performance out of it. And it has a, quite a respectable sort of performance figure. You can see here, uh, 10.48 seconds at 140 miles an hour to cover 400-odd metres. The car runs on pump petrol, commonly available anywhere in the world, and all you have to do is fill up the water injection tank and away you go, you have full power. I'll play a bit of a video now showing the performance of the car and you can get a perspective for yourself as to just how how powerful it is I suppose from the video. Keep in mind uh, we're not drag racers, couldn't give a fuck about that, don't care about putting special tyres on, don't care about yak semen getting squirted on the track all of that's fucking bullshit. All we're interested in is the acceleration of the car and some people like to look at the terminal velocity and the mass of the car and come to their own conclusions as to what the power actually is. Uh, this car has run with the driver in it, as you see it in the coming videos, is 1,680 kilograms. Uh, you can deduce yourself you know, what power you want to derive from it, but it's quite quick. Let's play those videos now. 